Hi, I'm Brandon O'Neill. I'm Diego Maniello. I'm Joshua Gonzalez. And welcome to our Mechanical Design Team project on bevel, spiroid, and high point gears. Through our presentation, we'll be talking about the history, manufacturing, materials and parameters, application, and modern examples of gears. That's right, Diego. And it all started in the 27th century BC when a Chinese mechanical engineer named Majun invented this device. This device is a figurine on top of gears, on top of wheels. And what happens is whenever you rotate this device, the figurine on top always orients itself in the southern direction. In the 4th century BC, Aristotle wrote that when a gear is rotated, it produces an opposite directional rotation in the accompanying gear. Now these gears also made important appearances in Leonardo da Vinci's famous sketches. Interestingly enough though, it wasn't until 1835 that gears and drives started making noticeable technological improvements, when the very first halving process was invented by an English inventor named Whitworth. Now here what we have is an overview of the different types of gears we're going to cover. The first thing we have is a bevel gear, which is gear working another gear at an angle to it by means of bevel wheels. We also have the height wheel gear, which is the difference is the teeth engage with a spiral pinion mounted at right angles to the wheel's axis, and it has non-intersecting shafts. The third thing is a spiroid, which is similar to a hypoid except that the gear mesh is more gradual due to the conical surface of the gear. To expand upon what Brandon was saying and serve as a bit of a visual aid, uh, we're going to show you these diagrams. If you look over here, you'll see the hypoid gear, and right above it, an image of the spiroid gear. Also at the top right up here, we have an image of the bevel gear. And now we're going to go to Nico to talk about the manufacturing process. Thank you, Josh. The American Gear Manufacturer Association sets the standards for all gears. Two manufacturers which use these protocol is the Griffin Gear and Aero Gear. Aero Gear is the world's first gear manufacturer to implement a fully integrated manufacturing closed-loop system. There are 10 steps in this closed-loop system ranging from design all the way to final tube grinding inspection. Three major operations which are highlighted by this process are the cutting, inspection, and grinding operations. Aero Gear has many other machines in their facilities. The ones mentioned before, as well as turning, broaching, and industrial welding. Now to Josh for some applications. So before going into applications, you first need to consider the parameters you're going to set for the gear. Beginning with what kind of gear you're going to make. Next with how are you going to machine the gear. And then lastly, what kind of accuracy does the gear require for the job that it's doing. The AGMA ranks the gear quality from a scale, on a scale from 3 to 15, 15 being the highest, 3 being the lowest. Of course, there are also important qualities that stand with the gear, like um, the weight, the dimensions, uh, the speed, how much stress it, it can withstand, the noise it produces, and how much shock resistance there is. To elaborate on the materials, Brian is going to come up. Thanks, Josh. Next up, we've got materials, and I'm going to focus on metal specifically. First, we have cast iron, and it's good because it has good wear properties, it's excellent machinability, and it's easy to fabricate more complicated designs out of. After that, we've got steel, which is a bit stronger than cast iron and it's highly resistant to wear by abrasion. After that we have cast steel, which is similar to regular steel, except that it's even easier to fabricate more complicated gears. After that we've got the plain carbon steel, which are useful in industrial gears, where um, we got high toughness combined with high strength requirements. Alloy steels come after that, where uh, high tooth strength is required, along with low tooth wear. And finally we've got aluminum, which is used in lightweight gears, more like airplanes, stuff like that, for weight consideration and low inertia is required. In addition to the metals, there's also non-metals, which have their unique benefit over metallic subjects. Such as nylon, which is very low friction, does not require lubricant, and has very high water absorption. There's delrin, which is a kind of plastic made by DuPont, which is water resistant, has a long life, and low water absorption. There's phenolic laminates, which is a quiet operation. The highest strength of all the plastics. And there's also fluorocarbon Teflon, which is a low friction and does not require lubricant. Up next, we have Josh for some examples of applications. Thank you, Nico. To start off with, I'm going to tell you some applications of the bevel gear, seeing as it was invented before both the high and spiral gears. When the bevel gear came around, it was used in automotive, locomotive, heavy machinery, and even power plants. The main problem that arises with this gear was that as each tooth engages the other, they all impact the corresponding one at once. 
So of course, like any other design, they sought to improve it and the Hypoid Inspired gears came about. The Hypoid Inspired gears are mainly used in the gear differentials of our cars and trucks today. The reason is that the Hypoid gear has a larger diameter and various offset angles that allow you to maximize torque while minimizing power loss and are slightly quieter than the traditional gears. Uh, on, this, on this slide here you'll see that the images of the gears we talked about including some other ones with their applications listed below. Right here you'll see the primary application as I said was the gear differential. Uh, this gear differential, the main purpose it serves is that it makes the outer wheels of a turning vehicle spin faster than the inner ones so that the turn is better. And that concludes our presentation. I'm Brandon O'Neill. I'm Nico Manila. I'm Joshua Gonzalez. Thank you for your time.